Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today we're going to make something called a coping sled for my router table. Uh, before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already done that. Uh, but also, I want to explain to you why it's called what it is. So uh, let's have a look at that first of all. So let me tell you what we're doing today before we get started. Now, first of all, this is like a, a cabinet door. And this is the frame, of course, and this is the panel. And what we're working on is the frame components today. And when you're making a frame, of course, you want nice, tight joints. And when you're making these on a router, sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge. Here's my take apart frame. This is the rail. This is the style. And where they join like that, it's called coping. And that's why we're making a coping sled. So what we're going to do basically is make a jig for the router that holds this firmly in the router so that you make nice joints uh, that come together and hook up and make a nice tight joint. So to get started, I've taken some time and just cut some pieces of wood that I've had around here, some extra pieces of wood. The base for my coping sled is a good, a very good quality um, birch um, plywood. And I wanted a really good quality plywood here because I want something as flat as I can get it and that's very important to do that. Now I've got a couple of other pieces of wood here. This part here we're going to glue to the base and this part is going to be our our place to to set this because it's hard to glue a big piece of wood on here because it tends to slide around. So this is going to be what I want to butt it up to so that we make sure that we get this absolutely level. Okay, I've got a couple of clamps on there uh, and I've snugged it down and I'm still out a little bit and I find that if I just can tap that, there we go. That's perfect. Okay, now we come to the gluing part, and what I want to make sure is that I don't get glue in this area here so that this part here isn't going to glue. All right, well, this has been gluing up for a few hours now, and it should be nice and hard. And let's check it and make sure that our joint is... Now this little piece that we had, that's basically just a throwaway. That was just to help make sure we align this. Now is the critical part. I want to make sure that that is lining up. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, that's great. Now the next thing we need to do, pretty simple, we're just going to install a couple of toggle clamps on here. So the alignment of these is not critical. I've set it up so that the uh, plunger part is close to the middle of the uh, what I would normally have as the uh, frame part here but the router bit is going to come through here so I want to make sure that I don't get this too close because this will be the top so I'm just going to position that right about there I'm using a self-centering bit you may not have seen this before but there's a drill bit in there uh, and the point of this is when you put it up onto a hole like this uh, you make sure that the bit goes right in the center now in the first one, of course, it doesn't really matter that much, but uh, subsequent ones it will. So I'm just going to put that in there. We'll screw the first one down. Okay, now it makes a difference. Let me just show you what that looks like. 
See all those holes are all perfectly in the center. Now when you're adjusting your toggle clamps, they don't need to be there doesn't need to be super pressure down on this. It just wants to hold it firmly to the base. What's going to be more important is that you either, when you're holding it, either you can hold it by your hand or you can put a clamp on there, whatever works best for you. Um, but whatever you do, you want to make sure that this is held firmly against this backer block. And that's the whole point of this. So there's the jig and it's all set up, all ready to go, but before I do that I want to show you like woodworking we all know there's always different ways, different options of doing things and I've made dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of doors using this method, using a push block uh, and it's absolutely 90 degrees there and you just hold it firmly against the push block and run it through and you know what it works fine but once in a while um, it's not you know there's pressure this way this way and this way and if you uh, allow anything to ease up on it you can get a bad cut so that's what this jig is to solve is some of those pressure points now you can tell I haven't used this jig before because this bit you can see that the bit is going to be cutting into a part of the jig and that's exactly what I want and it's also going to be cutting in up here as well because I want a nice backer up here so I'm going to turn the dust collector on and we're going to run that first piece of wood through Now you can see that that bit stopped part way along and I don't understand why it did that so I'm just going to start everything up and retrace my steps. Okay, there's our first test cut and I, you can see that I recut that, but you know what, it's, an, it's actually, even though I recut that, and I typically don't like to do that, it's, you can see that it's, it is actually a, still a perfect cut. Uh, but what I'm going to, what I don't like is, I, I still haven't got the bit aligned all that good, so I'm going to realign the bit, I'm going to chop this off, and we're going to make one other cut, but I'm just going to make that bit uh, a little bit higher. Okay, that's perfect. Now what I'm going to do is cut the grooves on this so that we test to see how well that fits in there. There, and you can see what a nice tight joint that is, uh, and that's exactly what I'm looking for when I make this jig. Well that concludes my video for today, making a coping sled for the router table. And if you make one of these, the only thing you really need to make sure of is that your face plate here is absolutely 90 degrees to the base, not to this part here, but to the base. In fact, um, if I did this again, I think I'd make this part just a little, just a tiny bit lower, um, just so that it uh, defines it a bit better. But uh, other than that, I'm really happy with it, it works great. Pretty easy project to make uh, and something that you'll be able to use time and again every time you make doors. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.